Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I am a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about the overview of the immune system. We want to discuss the purpose of the immune system, uh, the cellular basis for immunity, the induction of the response, the effectors of the response, whether it's cell-mediated or uh, it's antibody-mediated, uh, and then we want to look at the ontogeny, where it came from. Now, the function of the immune system is to protect against foreign invaders of the body. And there's many of those, uh, small as viruses and large as uh, parasites. Uh, and then also to produce and protect a germ-free environment that's inside our body. So today we'll be talking about the overview of the immune system to facilitate uh, doing these two things. Thank you. Now, the immune system has two basic functions. One is to protect against foreign invaders to the body. That's what it does. It also produces and protects germ-free environment inside the body. Largely, it's germ-free, except certain places. Uh, in order to maintain that, the immune system uh, facilitates that. When the body is dead, uh, foreign invaders come in uh, and adjust the body. So it is to prevent uh, the invaders from killing the live individual. And here we see the invaders. It could be worms, could be protozoa, fungi, bacteria, or even viruses, as small as viruses, uh, are invaders of the body and the immune system has to combat. And here we can see what they look like, E. coli, uh, hepatitis C, uh, ciliated protozoa, HIV, different things that that um, not they don't want to kill us. What they want to do is to make a living for themselves uh, in us. And here you can see a domestic uh, pen, like a, a straight pen, and you can see that there's structures inside that pen, and those are bacteria. So whenever you get injected by a nail or by uh, or punctured with a nail or something, you carry the bacteria uh, in there in there with you. If you've ever been scratched by a cat, the cat inoculates you with bacteria while they scratch you. And here we can see uh, finger fingerprints, the fingers, uh, and you can see the sweat glands. So these are sweat glands up through here, and here you can see openings to the sweat glands that run through here, and here you can see bacteria in the sweat glands. And in fact, uh, a surgeon has to use glove on his hands because he can't wash all the bacteria out. So in the sweat glands, in the sweat duct, here we see it, bacteria in there that will not come out upon washing. And so they have to have gloves uh, to maintain a, uh, a partial sterile environment. So uh, to protect uh, germ-free environment uh, in the bone marrow, and here we see bone marrow, it's the blood vessels here, but these are cells of bone marrow, fat cells here. Again, a blood, uh, a blood again uh, in the uh, bone marrow. And so this is a source of the progenitor cells. So you want to uh, protect uh, this environment. Uh, and here we can see in blood, we want to protect the blood uh, from uh, uh, components that I want to invade the body. Here we see neutrophils, uh, platelets, uh, and uh, other retrocytes. Now there's three key steps on combating infection. One is a break the cycle of transmission. Uh, you kill the vector so it doesn't bring them to you. Or you don't let the plane land that has Ebola in it. Uh, you break the transmission. The second thing is you kill the infectious uh, agents. And so this is why we disinfect our hands to disinfect things. Everywhere you see there's hand washes, it's disinfecting. Also increase the host uh, resistance, uh, and that's by uh, increasing uh, immunity of the host is what, is what you try to do. So uh, there are different lines of offense. The, the main line of defense is a physical one. It's the skin. The skin, stratum corneum, uh, also, the hydrochloric acid in the stomach and the mucosa in the intestines, all those guard against the invasion of things uh, into the body's milieu. 
Uh, also, you can, uh, and so you break the cycle of transmission is what we're doing. It transmits through uh, into uh, the germ-free environment uh, and you want to prevent that transmission. Also, the second line is pathogens uh, of, uh, of the fence. And so um, uh, neutrophils kill uh, infected agents. Uh, and so uh, neutrophils kill bacteria. And monocytes make macrophages. And throughout the body you see where there's a host of different cells. They all come from uh, the um, a a monocyte in blood going to the various tissues. You can see them in the liver, the kufra cells. You can see them in the spleen. Uh, you can see them uh, in, in the um, bone. Different places, all those came from the same phagocytic precursor, the monocyte, uh, and here we see a monocyte right there. Uh, uh, the uh, pathogens at work, we can see neutrophils and macrophages. Here are neutrophils going to gobble up bacteria, and here you see a macrophage really sent out of the pseudopodia uh, to get this bacteria. Now, the increased host uh, resistance uh, is one of the things. So these are characteristics of immunity. One is it's acquired. It requires exposure to the antigen. That's why we are immunized against something is that uh, we expose the body to this antigen. Maybe a dead virus, maybe. Um, and then it's specific. So it's specific for whatever you're exposed to. Uh, you get sick when you go to some other country and drink their water. They get sick when they come here because uh, they have not been exposed to the specific uh, pathogens uh, that uh, other people, are uh, that local people are exposed to. And they uh, develop resistance to those. Also, it has a memory. So it remembers previous exposure. That's the whole premise of vaccination is, is it remembers that, and if it ever sees that antigen again, it's going to have a quick response. Now, characteristic immunity is acquired and must be developed. So a newborn calf does not have that, or a newborn infant doesn't have that. And that's why the early milk, the first milk, is colostrum. Uh, and colostrum uh, has antibodies in it, uh, IgA, IgG, IgM. Uh, it has uh, a lactoferrin, uh, a lysosome, complement, uh, different things that are in there to help combat in infection temporarily until the baby is able to uh, develop it from, uh, from exposure. So it must be acquired and also a specific. So whatever uh, antigens you're exposed to, uh, that's what uh, the body is going to mount the immune response to. And so antigens uh, uh, made are specific to the molecules that they have. And here we see someone sneezing and someone's got a head cold there, stuffed up feeling uh, that may reside. Also, it has memory. It's a quick second response. And so here we see the first response is more slow. Uh, here is a quick and a larger response. So uh, you immunize against something, you expose to that later, you have a bigger immune response to it uh, in the second time. So remember, it's acquired is specific and it has memory. Uh, that's the whole premise of the thing. There's different uh, types of immune responses. Uh, there is a it's a product type and that is the antibodies, antibody media. That is the products of the cells is what uh, does the does the killing. Uh, and then there's a cell mediated. So it's the cells themselves that do the killing. And these are the T uh, T cells as opposed to antibodies are produced by plasma cells which differentiate from uh, B cells. So example of the immune response, reaction against microorganisms or bacteria or viruses. You ever been bitten by an ant and you know it uh, makes a little pus there? And that's the immune response. Those are, those are uh, neutrophils uh, that are in there. A reaction uh, against tumor cells, we all have that. And thank goodness, otherwise we'd have cancer. Allergic reaction, hay fever, poison ivy. You can see this girl, she's got flowers, but uh, it is not good for her. 
Uh, and then autoimmune re rejection with arthritis, type 1 diabetes. So uh, you have rejection of yourself uh, in that case. And then graft rejection. So you, you, you don't have, um, so uh, you regret, re reject the, the graft as a type of immune response. So the organs of the immune system, there's uh, primary organs, and that's the bone marrow and the thymus for the T and B cells. And then there are secondary organs. And secondary organs, there's the spleen, lymph node, and lymphoidal tissue prior patches. So the primary organs are going to produce the, uh, the, the, the cells that's going to then seed the secondary organs of the body. And uh, the first primary organs, you want the cells to develop independent of the antigen. That's why you have a blood thymus barrier. Uh, but the secondary organs, you want to get the antigens in the vicinity of the reactive cells. And so, um, organs of the immune system, uh, we have bone marrow and thymus, as I mentioned, and basically produce uh, the antibodies from B cells, uh, make plasma cells, uh, and then the actual killer cells themselves. And here we can see the different ones. This is from the T cells coming down through here. You got a heifer cell, suppressor cell, killer cell, and you got a memory cell. And over here on the B line, uh, the B cells produce uh, platelet producing, uh, no, sorry, um, antibody producing uh, uh, plasma cells, and they have memory as well. So there's three notable characteristics of uh, lymphocytes. Uh, their primary cell of interest one is uh, unique receptors on the surface the actual and only immune globulin that the cell is capable of reacting to. So it has immune uh, cell uh, receptors on there, which is unique for whatever antigen uh, is reacted to. Clonality, one cell gives rise to others with the same receptor. Groups of cells with the same unique receptor is what you have, and activation. That is, uh, the cell has to see the antigen before it activates, and when it activates, the nucleus swells, uh, the DNA unwinds, cytoplasm increases uh, uh, for a cell to respond. And so this cell would increase the amount of DNA, divide uh, to increase the number of cells for responding to the, uh, uh, to the immune uh, uh, insult. So, uh, what triggers activation triggers the lymphocytes encounter the antigen. So whenever the uh, the uh, lymphocyte sees the antigens, then they're triggered either to become killer cells uh, or to become uh, plasma cells that produce antibodies. And so those are notable characteristics of lymphocytes: specificity, clonality, and activation. Remember, molecules on the surface are T and B cells. Uh, the immunoglobulin B, the T cells develop antigens in specific receptors. Antigens relate to cell function. The T4 positive antigens are, are the antigen makes cells prone to the viral infection by the HIV virus. Deletion of this subset of T cells. So you're deleting certain cells, the T4. The T8 positive cells uh, are suppressor cell ratio to increase macrophages are really the taxes for the HIV because the macrophages job is to is to take it and partly digest it and to present it to the other cells. So macrophages is very important. Now there's molecules on the surface of the T and B. Uh, the immunoglobin on the B is actually going to be the antibody being produced by that by the plasma cell once it becomes that. And then also you have immunoglobin on the surface of the T cells too that allows it to react to whatever its target is. Induction of the response, accessory glands are required. And here we see the macrophage interacting with these T cells. Macrophage uh, interacts with T cells to produce leukokines that will uh, help differentiation or develop uh, the cells. You get cell interactions uh, with related cells regulatory with regulatory cells you got heparin cells suppressor cells um, and then the peripheral organs need to get the antigen response so uh, you 
as I said, the primary organs are developed in, in kind of like in a germ, more of a germ-free environment, more so. Uh, the secondary organs, their role is to get the antigen in the vicinity with a cell that can react. And that's what happened in the lymph node of the pancreas. Then the effector cell, B cells, you have to uh, disseminate dissemination of plasma blasts, antibody structures we see, switching antibody, and this is what we're going to see in the next couple of slides. Clonality, whatever antibody or whatever antigen that cell responds to, uh, surface receptors uh, are unique to that cell, and whenever that cell starts to make something else, it's going to be... Um, uh, it's going to make a lot more plasma cells, uh, just like the one making the same antibody, monoclonal antibodies. So here we see antibodies. you got uh, two parts of a light chain and a heavy chain uh, that we can see. One of them is, uh, is a C fraction and the FAB uh, fraction. <clears throat> now, the antibodies are unique, or the antigens on, on the cells are unique. The receptors are really unique. So uh, that cell doesn't re react to anything, uh, everything. It reacts only to that antigen whenever it's exposed to it. And so here we see the different classes, IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD, IgE. So uh, you have these host of ones, mostly IgM and IgA are the ones that are transmitted uh, to, the, uh, to, the immune, uh, to the surface uh, of tissues and all. So what happens is antibodies are produced by pl uh, plasma cells and then they're transcytosed to the surface is, is uh, largely what happens. So there's uh, uh, antibodies, what do they do? They uh, fix complement, uh, uh, opsonize, they prepare things for eating, they uh, toxify neutralizations, uh, neutralize toxins, they prevent microbial binding to the mucosa. Uh, virus uh, neutralization interferes with cell proliferation, penetration. And then um, uh, degranulation of mast cells is what they do. And here we can see where antibodies, uh, the FC fragment um, bound to uh, the, the mast cell. And then when the mast cell sees that antigen, it causes it to degranulate and here we can see what happens you get uh, septic receptors in sucking amp calcium influx and that causes exocytosis here we can see where cells exocytosing thing versus not there effector cells you got a cytotoxic killer cells the t cells delay type hypersensitivity cells so delayed some cells and then amplification factors uh, lymphokines other cell types are welcome to uh, effector cells. You got uh, you got cytotoxic killer cells. Um, you have that's the afferent arm and the efferent arm. So your afferent arm uh, is where you're making the blast, and the efferent arm is where you're actually making the antibodies or the leukokines or or uh, the T cells are specifically attacking itself. Uh, it it itself is attacking things. Effector cells, uh, cytotoxic killer cells, and you can see where uh, the big cell has been killed by little by little lymphocyte. So uh, the lead, the late type hypersensitivity uh, T cells, uh, also amplification. You got factors, interleukins, and other things. So this little lymphocytes are killing this big cell, as you can see. And so the lymphocytes, you got uh, B, and they make plasma cells, antibodies. You got T cells, they remain T. Uh, they just poke out at a distance. Uh, uh, and so um, the T cells So we have effector cells, the uh, T cells, the cytotoxic uh, killer cells, and here you can see where uh, the T lymphocytes are killing 
uh, these other cells. Again, here you can see we're a little emphasized to killing this big cell and cause it to uh, uh, disintegrate. Uh, there are different cells. The B cells produce plasma cells, produce antibody, and they have memory cells. T cells uh, are the T cell receptors on the surface uh, of the cell. There's memory cells to sensitive to the antigens. Uh, if you see it again, cytotoxic cell destroys the transplant. Uh, helper cells uh, secrete substance that help the T and B response. Suppressor cell dampen the response to foreign antigens. Here we see a macrophage uh, that is uh, interacting with uh, other cells as a dendritic uh, cell that it's interacting with. Uh, and and it'll be uh, what the macrophage does. It takes some of the antigens, digests a little bit of it, and then presents it back to the other cells. That's why it's a it's a taxi for the HIV. Here we see the mass uh, macrophage uh, and the T lymphocytes that are interacting with them. Lymph node uh, uh, is to filter the lymph uh, and to try to get the antigen if they're located in a given area uh, for it to to interact with the reactive cells. So uh, the primary thing is to produce the cells. The second one is to interact with them. And uh, the lymph node is one way to uh, give them access to uh, 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 bacteria or foreign invaders. Uh, peripheral organs uh, needed uh, for, so you can't just have the primary, you have to have secondary organs. Uh, lymphocyte recycling. So. You have lymphocyte looking for its energy. If it doesn't find it, it recycles around. Uh, appropriate context, uh, you want to maintain the barrier. So um, uh, lymph, no, lymph, uh, lymph nodes, it filters lymph is what it does. And here you see a lymph node. This is the afferent lymphatic, efferent lymphatic. Uh, and uh, here you can see where there's a, a germinal centers would be and follicles would be. And you have an arteria on the venous side, and here we see the, the lymph node that is filled with it, and here's a, a lymph vessel that's going to that lymph node. And here we can see again a hieromagnetous area, the light and darks inside there. Uh, what happens is uh, you, from the blood, uh, the postcapillary venules, you have uh, T and B cells migrate out of the blood uh, into uh, the organ to the lymph node, uh, and then uh, fluid comes back uh, uh, and through the, through the thoracic duct ultimately get, get back. So it recycles uh, the, uh, the lymph. So you get a nail stuck in your foot, you have been injected, so you've broken the first line of defense, which is that barrier. So the second line of defense, the macrophages move in uh, and prepare, and a beep uh, lymphocyte uh, may produce uh, plasma cells to produce antigens so you can see different uh, bacteria ready to invade. And so here we can see a lymph node. It filters things. You have precursor cells here. You have cells that can react. And then these uh, react with plasma cells to stimulate uh, the production of, uh, of antibodies that are there. And antibodies uh, can bind things, uh, it um, uh, opsonizes things, it makes them more easy to digest. Here we see in the limp, in the digestive tract, so these are intestinal absorptive cells. Here, here's Pryor's patches, there's a little epithelial cell that's on the surface there, kind of antigen presenting, interact with the cells, cells respond, get into the lip node, thoracic duct, back into the bloodstream and to go out underneath this tissue, as we see there, uh, to combat whatever is there to uh, enhance uh, the immune response to uh, whatever uh, antigen is out there. And here we can see uh, plasma cells here, and there are lots of plasma cells here for the same type principle. The lymph nodes, they filter lymph. As you know, we got lots of lymphocytes in through there that are there located here with the little uh, membrane cells on the surface. So amplification immune response, there's different factors. There's um, uh, leukokines and other cell types involved. So protein uh, uh, messengers trigger response. 
um, is what we have. So you got the macrophages produce interleukin one, interleukin two, and then they should be used in these two. Uh, also, here we see the whole thing where the macrophage interacts with the T cells. The T cells produce uh, these interleukins that stimulate other T cells. Uh, they also stimulate the B cells to come on board. And so uh, you get engulfing, uh, you get the engulfing and invading thing and coupling with the heifer cell. A macrophage creates uh, interleukins, which stimulates the heifer cell, uh, the T uh, heifer cell. A little hand here is the heifer cell, uh, causing the activation of heifer cell produce interleukin 2, uh, and so uh, it causes uh, uh, B cell differentiation factor, uh, and again, B cell differentiation factor that's there. So you have um, the macrophage interacts with the heifer cells, which interacts with the effector cells. Uh, it also causes uh, uh, differentiation uh, of the plasma cells. So it's talking to these plasma cells as you see here and here and there. Uh, and it also stimulates other macrophages to produce more. So it's kind of like a positive feedback in the theorem. Uh, and so you again gather momentum. Uh, you can see how it would mount an immune response. Ontogeny cell, uh, cells come from the bone marrow. Primary lymph, primary lymph, lymphoid organ is thymus and bone. Secondary lymphoid organ is spleen, prior patches, and the lymph node. Uh, and there you get differentiation to mature antigen reactive cells is what you do. So here we see the lymphocytes and they can go down to B side or the T side. Here's a, a megakaryocyte and a plasma cell like that. So next time we're going to talk about lymphoid components. Uh, that is there, uh, but still not lose sight of the fact that we're talking about the lymphocyte. We thank the various um, books from which illustrations uh, were taken. This is uh, Montana, maybe a little bit toward Wyoming. Um, we were there seeing the Tetons uh, in the wintertime, just below um, Yellowstone Park. And here we can see the different mountains there. Thank you. If this is useful, please share it uh, with uh, your colleagues uh, and your fellow students. Thank you.